welcome to this session of Eight and Eight, brought to you by the Society of Thoracic Surgeons and the Critical Care Workforce. In this production, we will be focusing on the ideal vent settings for VV ECMO. And this session is brought to you by me, Dr. Helen Ray Merritt, and by my co-host, Dr. Awari Hayanga. Much of the evidence pertaining to vent settings is drawn from what we have studied in ARDS, influenza, and lung transplantation. The pathophysiology in the acute setting is remarkably similar. Cell-mediated damage of the alveolar epithelium results in accumulation of protein-rich edema within the interstitium and alveoli. Alveolar macrophages then secrete pro-inflammatory cytokines, resulting in neutrophil recruitment and activation of alveolar epithelial and effector T cells that promote and sustain inflammation and tissue injury. The result is the thickening of the walls and a buildup of fluid inside the alveoli that effectively prevents gas exchange. Within the literature, there are a number of repeating themes when it comes to mechanical ventilation and lung protection. However, we can all agree that prolonged mechanical ventilation, especially at high settings, is harmful. Rat models have shown that at the same peak airway pressure, those ventilated with lower tidal volumes develop less severe permeability and pulmonary edema. The injurious actor is volume, and time exerts a multiplier effect. As a result, the duration of mechanical ventilation is utilized in the REST score, a prediction model for mortality in VV ECMO. It's this understanding that becomes the cornerstone of lung protective ventilation. The right amount of PEEP recruits the alveolar segments without compromising cardiac output. So you've made a decision to place a patient on ECMO, and now you have a cannulas in place. What next? Well, education of the ICU staff to make them comfortable with O2 saturations between 80 and 85%, as long as the patient is otherwise doing fine, the SVO2 is adequate, lactate is normal. The most important theme is to let the circuit do the work. Sweep flow rate on the ECMO circuit can be titrated to a target PCO2 level, allowing for an immediate reduction of respiratory rate and tidal volume. In doing so, one can almost immediately reduce the minute ventilation on the ventilator. We limit the PEEP to 10 because for each centimeter of water increase is associated with a 36% decrease in survival. Using a tidal volume of four to six cc's per kilogram of ideal body weight decreases pulmonary injury, decreases pulmonary edema, reduces cytokine production, and protects the alveolar epithelium. Steadily decreasing FiO2 to 30% is beneficial because oxygen can induce toxicity in the context of a VQ mismatch and trigger reabsorption atelectasis. Reducing rate to 10 minimizes the cyclic recruitment and de-recruitment. And this 30, 30, 10, 10 approach has yielded consecutive excellent results, often well above ELSA survival benchmarks and likely speed the time to spontaneous breathing. The power to the lungs also must be reduced when on ECMO. During the AOLI trial, tidal volume was reduced by 43% and the respiratory rate was reduced by 23%, while the PEEP remained essentially unchanged. This represents an estimated 66% reduction in the mechanical power applied to the lungs from 26 joules per minute to just 10 joules per minute. This reduction was associated with a higher survival rate compared to the ECMO versus control groups, 81 out of 124 versus 68 out of 125. ELSO and the European Network of Mechanical Ventilation also support the same parameters. The understanding and appreciation of mechanical power has crystallized the concept of driving pressure. By meta-analysis, driving pressure is the only vent setting independently associated with mortality. Driving pressure is calculated by subtracting PEEP from plateau pressure. The key to moderating driving pressure is thus in limiting plateau pressure. Most easily, this is achieved using pressure control ventilation. Each one centimeter of water increase in plateau pressure is associated with a 14 point decrease in odds of survival. In fact, a plateau pressure greater than 40 on day one of VV ECMO has a 30% increased odds of death. Recommended PEEP by all authoritative accounts remains somewhat static at 10. 
and the driving pressure is manipulated by keeping plateau pressures between 10 and 30 at the most. This has a secondary role in increasing compliance because tidal volume here in the numerator is also somewhat fixed at four to six kilos, four to six cc's per kilo. Compliance is thus dependent on plateau pressure. What mode is used is less important than one's familiarity with the vent. A mode-oriented approach is predicted, predicated on the manufacturer settings available on the ventilator, but vents have different capabilities. And an easier way to look at this is formulating a plan based on the designated pressure limit. Again, the plateau pressure should be between 10 and 30, never greater than 30. And then using whatever settings one is accustomed to to achieve this. It is important to approach the vent with an orientation towards liberating the patient from the vent. If we can get the patient to breathe spontaneously, no matter what mode, the advantages are myriad. Prolonged controlled ventilation without diaphragmatic contraction results in severe disuse atrophy and increased duration of vent support. That's right. Spontaneous breathing improves oxygenation, improves the intrapulmonary shunt, improves visceral organ perfusion, and encourages early rehabilitation. So in this final slide, we have summarized the findings from several landmark trials relating to mechanical ventilation for VV ECMO patients. As you can see, the repeating theme is PEEP of 10 or greater, low respiratory rate, low FiO2, low plateau pressure. Again, we call this the 30-30-10-10 approach. The ventilator should be adjusted for these lung protective strategies, fully utilizing the support of the ECMO circuit, especially during the early phase of mechanical support. Thanks, Awori, and thanks for those listening. Feel free to reach out to either one of us with questions about this session, and be sure to look out for other eight and eight topics as well.